Hello and welcome to let me bore you to sleep dot com and my name is Jason Newland this is let me bore you to sleep number 140 and what was I going to say? Oh yeah, only listen when you can safely close your eyes because this is going to be very, very boring. But I decided to do a live recording on Facebook just to share it for those of you that would like to be part of this. So I'm going to invite a few people probably some that will be in bed but hey well hey well he will he will in him any anywhere and then if anyone is awake they want to come and be part of this thing then cool and if you don't then cool and if you do then cool and you know, all the other cool, cool stuff that may be involved in the, the situation. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to see. There's probably a few people I could, but I can't think of any. Beth Marie Lidyard says, hello. Oh, she's hi, hi. How you doing? Are you okay? Are you alright? Are you doing alright? And normally, well, normally, recently, I've been doing all of my audios, all of my recordings as an audio on my podcast. And uh, a couple of people have asked if I would do some live broadcasts and or if I was going to be doing live broadcasts. Uh, this says, Yay, YH, is that yeah, yeah, and good thanks. How are you, Arian Wine Roberts? Hello, Arian, Arian, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Beth, I'm all right. I've got, um, Yeah, I'm all right. What did I do? Got to go to the doctor's tomorrow to get the results of my blood tests, which is uh, apparently my cholesterol's high, which I knew it would be anyway, has been for years. Uh, last year I was got I was told if it gets too high, much higher, you have to start taking tablets to get it down. And um, but. But uh, there's something else apparently, and uh, the person at the the doctor's reception, I spoke to them, and uh, for some reason it seemed like they didn't like me. <laughs> so I don't know why. I was just asking, you know, sort of. I said, "Can I get the results?" Which they've got a special line for the results, and uh, he said, "Oh." we can't give you the results over the phone you have to speak to the doctor so i got to go in. but there's something and i asked i asked the receptionist what does it mean what does that word mean and she said i can't tell you on the phone you have to speak to the doctor so if it's high cholesterol well, it is high cholesterol it's abnormal apparently uh, so i don't know if i'm gonna have to go on tablets I don't understand why my cholesterol gets so high though because I'm such a healthy eater and I don't know. I've actually lost weight. I was 101 kilos at the beginning of the year. I'm now 95 kilos. So there. Hi Sophie, love. I think love's such a great surname. 
I used to have a, what was his name? I used to work with someone, Darren Love. And I don't know what it was, but he was such a, the women loved him. And it was like his name, it's like it gave him special powers. Not Darren, but Love. Hello, Darren's a cute, cool name as well. Hi, Sophie. Hi, y'all. Um, so, yeah, this is just one of my boring sessions, but it's a bit more interactive. Um, as I haven't done a video. So I said to me the other day, but I miss seeing your face. Why? Uh, and it's much easier to do it, just record it, you know, on my phone or on the tablet or whatever, and then just up, you know, do a bit of editing and upload it. But, um, how it's quite weird though on YouTube, I haven't got because the YouTube channel is fairly new and I've not put any much work into it really, and I haven't got many subscribers. Yet yeah, the people that do subscribe to me, I go to their page and they subscribe to people with millions of subscribers. So they, they're subscribing to these big YouTubers and then they're subscribing, subscribing to me and I've got like 235 subscribers. It's quite weird. It's weird, man. So I started thinking maybe I should put a little bit of effort into the YouTube channel. So I was gonna do a live broadcast on YouTube, but then I don't get anyone watching when it's live when I do it on YouTube. So before I do it on Facebook, I'm actually watching the election. It's local elections um, in England. I know that two people listening are from England, but for those in other countries. And I'm waiting to find out what my local one is because I actually voted for the very second time. I've never voted, I've only voted twice in my life. The last time was at the election the, uh, a couple of years back, but I didn't vote for, do I want to tag Laurie Wobston in this video? In this video? That's a bit strange. Why is asking me if I want to tag? Oh, I've just ta I've tagged it by accident. Laurie, Laurie, what? I wonder why that is. I've done a few of these live videos, live Facebook things. I've never ever been asked to tag somebody. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know if, if anyone else is watching it. Um, Sophie, Sophia rather, do you, do you know if my, if it's conservative still in here or is it Labour? I voted Labour because Labour never destroyed my career like the conservatives. That's true. And that's uh, supposed to be positive and stuff a little bit. This, I trained for three years full time at university to become a, to do what I was going to do. And all my work was with the, uh, Sophia says they're all politicians, so lose, lose. Yeah, yeah, true, I suppose. It's, probably not make very much difference to me. I think tomorrow morning I'll be walking down, well, not tomorrow morning, but whenever I leave my house next, I'll be walking down the street. I don't think the, uh, the, tr the trees aren't gonna be singing to each other, are they, if, if Labour got in? But, no, the Conservatives, every, all, most of my work was with charities, and I was getting paid, and I was doing all right, actually, financially. I was getting by quite well. And then all these uh, cuts came in and I, like, I went from having enough money to having 
less than enough to having way less. My last year of working full time, well, not well, I wasn't working full time, but the last my last year of working self employed, I earned five thousand pounds. Seriously. And uh, and then I got a tax bill for the next year. Because I, I don't know how, but I managed to end up paying tax on that. And they gave me a tax bill for like two grand or something. Oh, I don't know. Got very complicated. And I'd... Um, I ended up having to get a full-time job because of the situation. I didn't pay any tax for, I think, two months of the job. And because I didn't declare that on my self-employed thing, even though I didn't think I needed to, because I, I imagine I figured the government knew what they were doing, and I ended up with a £2,000 tax bill. And they managed to get it down to 1000 and it literally took me four years to pay off of five pound a week for just over four years. Every Monday, five pound. So it's quite weird. It's, uh, you know, I actually said to them, I said, so we've got it down to a thousand, just over a thousand, thousand two hundred or something, thousand one hundred. And I said, okay. He said, how much can you afford to pay? Uh, I said, well, here's the situation. I'm unemployed. I've got probably £30 a week to kind of for food, you know, after everything. Because I had to pay extra for rent and stuff because I didn't get paid enough from the housing to cover the rent for the room I was in. Uh, the room was £85 a week and the rent was that they would pay was something like 64 something like that and they said okay well would like you to pay 75 pound a week back off the money and I phoned them back because they sent me less said yeah 75 pound a week something like that and I phoned them and said mm -hmm. and uh you know, I said, look, and I explained the situation to the person on the phone and they laughed. They weren't laughing at me. They were just laughing at the stupidity of asking for £75 from someone. I'd already given them all the proof of my money and what I was getting or not getting. And he just, all he did was just apologise. He said, so, so sorry for that. And he begged for forgiveness and... He offered to send me a sausage roll in the post. It was, you know, just general, just good customer service. And we all got stopped. Conservatives hold, haven't, hop, okay. I'm still looking at the TV there. Bolton, Trafford, and Calverdale. I don't know why I watch these political programs. And I do, I watch way too many and I've been watching the you know the old Brexit stuff and I still don't understand it I still don't understand it so I'm down to very few people so who's watching who's on here right now I used to I, I suppose I should have given... I, know, I never give any notice when I'm going to be online, when I'm going to do this stuff, which I probably should, but I don't like to plan. I struggle with planning. Something about planning that just doesn't feel right. I was watching a, a YouTube video by Bob Pr Proctor, and he was talking about The Secret and about... Um, Napoleon Hill's Think is it Think Yourself Rich or something like that and it just reminded me of when I was younger because I used to be really into those kinds of books self-help um, motivational stuff 
even going back to when I was 18 and I used to, I wanted to be a proper salesman or person, but in them days we called it salesman. We didn't, you know, it's a long time ago. Uh, but I wanted to be a salesman, a salesperson and earn loads of money. But it wasn't just that, I wanted to be really good at something. And I was a bit aimless at that time in my life. And uh, I got this job in canvassing, double glazing company, knocking on people's doors, asking them if they wanted to um, get a quotation for their windows. And I was really good at it, which surprised me because it involved coming out of myself. Perhaps I should rephrase that. But it, it involved... Uh, sort of some kind of astral traveling but it involved me um, pretending to have a personality and uh, in a sense I could try on different personalities you know some some days I'd be be like Robin Williams well not like him but kind of that kind of frenetic and uh, um, doing kind of stand-up comedy on a doorstep and they'd be laughing but they're probably just laughing at me probably but and I just I kind of found my niche gave me an opportunity to be something other than what I thought because I didn't think I was anything I didn't think I could do anything really I hadn't had a lot of success in my short career at that point. Worked in a chip shop. Although I was, I think I was quite, maybe not great with the customers, perhaps wasn't, oh, I don't know. Um, but <laughs> I wasn't great with the customers, wasn't great with the staff, terrible at frying the fish and the chips, very unhygienic. Um, very bad with the till, you know, all that stuff. Um, but I was punctual. And that means something. No, I, I, was, I was okay. I wasn't the best employee. But I did try, you know. But um, I was young. I didn't really know what the hell I was doing. I was... 15 when I started working there for two years and then I got a job in a pub I got a job in a supermarket got a job in an old people's home uh, did I say only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes because it's really boring like proper I had this job Here's a good one for you. When my parents split up, she dated, well, she was a stepmom, but she dated a bloke, well, a couple of blokes. One who she worked with, and but he was, I don't know, it didn't, wasn't really, really his biggest fan, to be fair. Um, and then I was in a nightclub, and she'd, she'd gone, she'd moved away, and he was in this nightclub, and I was what, still probably 17 at the time, wasn't 18 yet, in this nightclub, the only nightclub in the town, I think, at the time. And he came up to me, and he whispered in my ear, I... You can fill in the gap here, your mum. I, eat your mum. Or, duh, is a D on the end, I did this too. And I was just in, sh I was just in shock, because I didn't know what to do. It's like, what? I think most people would have reacted differently to the way I did, but I didn't do anything. 
and it was really weird because about a year later I got a job in this old people's home or residential home as a cook or an assistant cook and I was being trained by the cook there and who turns up this bloke on his motorbike and visiting his mum who was the person teaching me and don't worry it's not going in a weird direction you know I didn't get a chance I didn't sort of whisper to him in his ear because sometimes sometimes revenge isn't that important you know and she didn't like me and I had this ongoing problem with the staff well, and the people that lived there and the surrounding neighbours see if you've got if you work in a place full of elderly people it doesn't matter if it's elderly young whoever and they all want someone saying hello hello and they all want the same thing but different so I had to make porridge some people liked I suppose some people like cornflakes I'm not gonna lie and say everybody had porridge but those people that had porridge there was maybe 15 people that had porridge and I couldn't believe the amount of different ways that people wanted their porridge you know it's like I remember one person saying oh it has to look like vomit and I was like okay I was like it's just like, it has to be thick it has to be slimy it has to be salty it has to be I mean, what are you going to wrestle in it? What, what are you going to do with this porridge? And it was never, and, and it was really a case of never being enough, never being right. And at the end of my trial, I got <laughs> sacked or dismissed, let go. And it wasn't that I couldn't cook because I had been to catering college uh, for a year. And I'd also worked in catering for two years previous to that, as well as catering when I was at school. Actually, I can't cook, but I can. I can kind of, I can, but I can't, if that makes sense. Uh, if you come, because I had a girlfriend once, hard to believe, but it's true. And I made her breakfast in bed, a couple of eggs, might have been scrambled eggs. I think it started out as fried eggs and then ended up being scrambled eggs. Uh, a couple of sausages that weren't totally burnt. Some beans that was a bit stuck together. And yeah, maybe a couple of slices of toast that was soggy. And a cup of tea. And I remember saying to me, um, she actually complimented me. She said the tea was lovely. But I think she said something about worrying about getting diarrhea or something. I just get a bit weird when I hear sounds over there and Andre's in his bed there. So what's making the sound out there? So yeah, I'd, I don't mind my food actually. I don't mind the food I cook. It's all right. Yeah, I think it's all right. I had a job, I had another job, yeah, sort of in a factory. I also had another job in a 
it's like a t um, tank freight place, like it was lorries taking stuff around the country. And I, so it's a, I don't know, haulage firm. And I got there and I'm not even, I'm not saying this is a joke at all, and it's, because it's not funny, but for some reason, the person, my boss, his girlfriend kept getting mugged. I mean, like probably four times in, you know, about five weeks. And I don't know if it was just a way to get off work early, but I thought there might be a, like a better way to do it. It's, uh, And then I saw it and she, I saw it, I met his wife and she was about three foot tall. And I was thinking maybe a cat banged into her. You know, so I don't know, I'm not, I'm not lightening the thing, but just, it's a very kind of unusual situation. Uh, tripped over a, a, a she might have tripped over a can. Uh, Sherry says, glad to see there will be a new podcast tonight. There will be, it will be this. Actually, actually, it will be this, and there will also be, to, I don't know, is it to, yeah. It's Friday now, so I need to do a Friday one for my weekly sleep podcast. So I need to do another one, like sometime during the night or tomorrow. And another deep sleep one. So uh, deep sleep whisper hypnosis. So there's a few, I've just been really busy um, avoiding doing anything. But at the same time, I've been I mean, to be fair, a dog could have farted and blown her over. Yeah, so I, I've just been thinking, like, you know, it's just like prioritizing the time and I've been building the websites again. So I've now I've got five websites on the go. Um, a couple of them, or three of them are built. And another one's, it's built, but I'm just, filling in the stuff and the podcasts generally are also getting more popular get more followers and stuff on the podcasts but I feel that I've kind of um, not been ignoring but not been given attention to my to the YouTube uh, followers subscribers or to my YouTube people and that's kind of where I started really on YouTube. Well, it isn't, but that's where I started getting um, known. Well, it isn't either, is it? MySpace before YouTube, um, but also a podcast. I was doing podcasting before I did YouTube as well, or kind of the same kind of time as YouTube started. But then podcasting didn't, it kind of lost its excitingness for you know and now podcasting is popular again for some reason um i wonder why that is yeah. so i had this job in this jack thompson shaku jacqua you know i just realized i got no idea how long i've been on it for that's not good, is it? I'm gonna to have to look to see. I'm gonna to have to go onto Facebook and find out. Cause, so I had this job in a, yeah, in this haulage place. And first of all, I was surrounded by lorry drivers that thought it would be funny just to make fun of me all the time. And 
I can't say I really enjoyed that part of it. And also I was a little bit feisty myself. So I'd answer back and they didn't like that. They thought I was going to just take it. But I never. Because I gave it back. And uh, the problem was... They gave me lots of stuff to do that I didn't know how to do. And the bloke that was working there, whose wife kept disappearing and self-combusting and stuff, he started having time off work, ill. Now, I do, I wasn't sure if it was because of me. But, and obviously he, he had reasons for, you know, I, I'm not um, questioning the reasons. But I was left on my own. There was just me and him in the office. And then it was just me. And I didn't know what I was doing. I genuinely did not know what I was doing. I'd only been there for about a month. And it took me all day to do a teletext. And those of you that don't know what teletext is. No, not a teletext. Telex. Teletext is the TV thing they used to have. That was the the pre-internet. Um, telex is basically is um, a way of it. Basically, all a telex is is a photocopy. You photo you you write in a letter, let's say, you f and then you just put it in the thing. It photocopies it and then sends it again I suppose like the internet excuse me I, that's why again I don't want to do in live stuff I just sneeze there and I try to make it as, as quiet as possible but you know, is that because <sighs> I could edit it out? You see, if it's on the thing, I discovered when I record on doing the podcast, I can actually pause while I'm doing it. I don't mean, I mean the actual thing, and uh the the audio so I can pause I can go and answer the door run around covered in jam whatever I want to do you know to, in, during that time and then come back and just continue as if nothing happened I just have to remember what I was saying before and I don't generally pause other than <sighs> if I'm going to sneeze or you know Andre decides to be naughty. Do you want to see Andre, by the way? There you go. Let's have a look, quick look. Can you see him? He's a mess. He's a messy. That's really weird. The when I moved the camera, the picture froze. That's weird. Are you getting the picture freezing while you're watching me, or is it just me? So I'm looking at my picture on the laptop. It's just me, and then I'm over here. I moved and. It's just little snapshots. That's weird. I hope that doesn't mean that the pictures, that the audio is also going to be not very good. Oh dear. 
So I don't know who's actually listening or watching. I don't know if you can, if it's even playing. Hopefully it is. And uh, that's really weird. That's that's putting me off now. Because it's frozen on the, the laptop. It's frozen. And if it's frozen, I know what I did the other day. I recorded, I did, it was a Let Me Boy You To Sleep, but I decided to do a counting down recording, you know, counting from 10 to one, but then like mixing it up and changing things around and a really good session. I mean, I, it's not that I never feel that it's good, but this was particularly good. Um, very kind of very hypnotic and I was finding myself falling asleep doing it and I was I think 34 minutes in to an hour session and Andre starts causing chaos I'm talking scratching rushing around knocking stuff off basically running into every single carrier bag and he's got quite a few dotted around here jumping onto things knocking stuff off he was like he was it's like his life's ambition was to wind me up and he did wind me up but the thing is i pressed the pause button But I forgot where I was in the recording. And I wasn't sure how to, like what number was I, what, and it just put me right off. So in the end I had to just get rid of it, just deleted it. And it was a really good record, it really was a good recording. It was uh, quite, very slow and very um, disorientating, if I can say the word, focusing on the different parts of your body, but also counting down, then saying sleep and counting down, then focusing on the different parts of your body, more of your parts of your body at the same time and then individual parts of your body. And just like really going in and in quite deep and then kind of coming out again. And yeah, I was quite I was quite pleased with that. It was going so well. So apart from this recording, where Andre is fast asleep because it's one o'clock. And, well, it doesn't really make any difference what time it is. He just sleeps when he sleeps. I don't think he's that interested in getting involved. He was awake half an hour ago. I was playing with him. And I was going to try and bring him on camera. But I'm not going to disturb him when he's asleep. It's not fair, really. Mind you, I don't mind disturbing him. I'm not sure. So I don't know, I might start making more videos with me on them, but I don't really, I don't know, I, I kind of prefer the podcasts, like the, I still do the podcast, but I kind of prefer the, um, being able to just wear whatever I want to wear without having to, because you know, I was clearly, I've, I just spat then I think, sorry. Clearly I'm, you can see I'm all dressed up and you know, all sexy and stuff. And I don't have to do that when I'm just recording an audio. But at the same time, 
audio, especially when it, the, the way I've been doing it lately, putting that on YouTube like that, it's not really a video in a sense, it's just a, basically an audio player on YouTube from Spreaker. I don't know. So the websites I have now is jasonnewland.com. That's always going to be around. Sometimes it's offline when I'm doing maintenance and stuff, but that's up and running and I'm doing, I'm working on it, but it's up. Um, letmeboreyoutosleep.com that's up and that's where all of these recordings will be as well as on jasonnewland.com as well and all the other podcasts uh, what other one is deepsleepwhisper.com that's got the deep sleep whisper hypnosis recordings on but they will also be available on jasonnewland.com and all on the different podcasts that are available then there is sleephypnosisweekly.com and that's got the, that's my weekly, it's quite a popular podcast. Now oh, this is an interesting story. Um, I've got the windows open so it's a little bit helicoptery. That's probably just looking for someone. What a lovely thought. Well, I'm alright, unless they've got a ladder. Not the helicopter, but you know, the thief or whoever it is that they're looking for. I was going to say something, but I forget what it was. See, excuse the mess, but look at this, what I've got. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you could. It was basically, yeah, it's all, if you see the black on the wall, um, it's um, soundproof foam. I need to do some vacuuming in there. Andre makes such a mess, it's ridiculous. It's not really, can't, I can't blame myself really, because I don't, I don't do much, you know? I don't, I don't drop stuff on the floor, really, much. And I, I'm sort of doing this, I'm gonna do the whole of this room in soundproof foam. It's black, so it means the room's going to be pretty dark. So what, once I've done that, I'm going to get some other soundproof foam that's yellow and red and just make it more patterny around it. Then I'm going to get, and I'm also going to put soundproofing foam on the doors as well, either side. And also, yeah, so that covers the doors. Then I'm going to get some soundproof curtains, maybe two sets of soundproof curtains, so I can block out anything from outside. Then I'm going to get a soundproof mat and eventually get the whole of the floor covered in the soundproof um, material, the kind of stuff maybe that you get in a gym or something like that, um, so that it's really soundproofed. And then Hopefully, it'll be quieter because it's not at the moment, and it's not like it's not like proper noisy. I know, apart from the helicopter, but sometimes it can be a bit too much, you know, and. You know, I have to I have to wait till early hours in the morning before I can even think about making a recording. 
especially now it's the sort of summertime. In the winter I can get away with it sometimes because you know, sometimes in the morning people don't, and there's not a lot of people about because it's raining, it's cold or whatever, so they might be indoors. Um, but in the summer there's people out in the garden getting drunk or whatever they do, having barbecues and stuff, um, practicing Shakespeare plays, you know, just the general stuff. And I, I just think, you know, I. I like being up at night, I like getting this stuff done and I like, you know, work on the websites, but I'd like to have the opportunity to be able to make my stuff during the day as well. You know what I mean? So that's my plan. So probably by the end of the year I'll have this whole room done. Every couple of weeks I'm going to buy a few more, you know, like maybe 8 or 16 tiles that I can put onto the wall so it's like what will that be so it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve eight nine twenty two one two three there's 24 tiles that I've got on there now so another 24 would cover the top part that part number 24 that part Number 24, that part. Number 24, that part. So one, two, three, four, five, six, then probably 11, 11 more of those. So that's, you know, every two weeks I get. And also I'm going to do the ceiling as well. I thought about getting a carpet. I put a carpet on the ceiling. But I thought that might be just weird. Because Elvis Presley used to have a carpet on his ceiling. And as I'm sure you're aware, when you first saw me, you probably thought, there's a lot of similarities between him and Elvis. I wonder if he's got a carpet on his ceiling. I wonder if he carries 17 handguns. So yeah, I, I might just get tiles and put them on the ceiling. So I have, you know, just have the whole room done. It's gonna be nice. And then get rid of pretty much everything else in here, get a decent chair to sit in as well. But then I'll be able to do the recording wherever I am. And I'll kick Andre out as well. He'll go into his cage whenever I make a recording, which I kind of should have done today, but I forgot. I was just so excited about making a recording that I forgot to kick the old rat out. The rat. My little baby. He's all weird. He's permanent, permanently dripping. And it's not even on the heat because it lasts for months and months and months. You know, sometimes he's dry for months. And then he's just dripping. He's, he, you know, basically he's, I don't know what to compare him to really. Um, just, I don't know, a Randy actor, you know, just think of a Randy Hollywood actor or, what's his name? Quagmire, Glenn Quagmire. A family guy that's probably what he's like he's just he's always always he's got a new thing now I mean he's he's got the slipper as his girlfriend's head so his girlfriend is the slipper but the body of his girlfriend <laughs> the body of his girlfriend is whatever he decides it to be Sometimes it's some sheets. Sometimes it's a carrier bag. Some, the other day I caught him. In fact, I walked in on him today, going, <coughs> I can't do this, but it's, it's a certain sound he makes when he's, um, um, reaching the finale, maybe would you say? 
and he was doing it to one of my socks. So it's like our two socks, one you know, rolled into each other, and he didn't roll them. He can't do that, but I did that. I didn't do it for him. I did it naturally. I don't supply him with socks to ruin. Uh, but he's got another thing. But I came in. It's like I heard that sound, and it just cheered me up. Just. I don't know, and then he ran out to say hello. Um, he went and hit his girlfriend, because Slippy doesn't like me going near it. If I pick it up, he's the slipper, he goes, and he really just start grabbing at it and stuff. I should give you a little tour one day. I'm going to have to make sure the place is a bit tidier uh, before, but the... He's got this snake. It's like pink snake. It's about... I can't really give you the length, can I, when the camera's at... It's quite long. It's probably about four foot long and maybe three and a half foot. And it squeaks, which I, I wish I remembered sometimes... I'm walking to the the window in there when it's dark and it makes me jump because I stand on it. It's like a really quite a loud squeak. That's like his child. Apart from when he's horny. But a lot of the time, he if I touch the, the snake, he will grab it off me. He doesn't like me touching it at all. He grabs it off me and he runs away with it. And he basically puts it back where it was. If I pick it up again, he takes it off me and then he hides it somewhere else. It's, he's, got, he's got some ways of him, you know. He's got his whole... Um, he likes things to be where they should be. He's got things planned out. The different teddy bears, the different things, the different toys... And he's got a blue little cuddly toy that I bought him. And it's about, it's about the size of his body, maybe. And that's now his, the bottom half of his girlfriend. That's his new thing. Because he can really grab hold of that. Because it doesn't, with a carrier bag or with a, you know, if it's always moving. But with a teddy bear, it, little, it's only a little blue thing. Well, it was blue. And it's... He's able to sort of hold on to it without it get you know um, escaping. Oh dear! So this might be one of my rare appearances on camera. Because it is, is I prefer just to do the podcasts, really. And I suppose if I had an audience, you know, if I did like a, a monthly Facebook thing, I could maybe do something like that. You know, if it was a Q and A, or you know. But to have it as a specific recording might be, I don't know. I mean, I've done a few live Facebooks, uh, Let Me Boy You To Sleep ones, and no one's ever kind of moaned and said, well, you know, we prefer it when you do something different or you know, or don't moan saying why are you talking to people and stuff. But luckily, I didn't get enough people on there to actually get engrossed into a conversation. I had a couple of people say hello, and it's uh, yeah. I think it's uh, it's just one of those things. It's I know. 
Andre's appeared. Got him. I think he's asleep. Are you asleep? He just came and did a wee wee. I was just checking to see what he was doing before I grabbed him. And say hello. Hey, say hello. You don't. You want to go back to bed, don't you? All right. I'm gonna let him go back to sleep because. He's, uh, I've probably woken. Now he's gone back into his, into his bag. That wasn't fair to keep him awake. He was still asleep when he was doing a wee. You know, he's, that's quite funny really. That he doesn't, I think he's, he doesn't get any notice when it's time to go to the toilet for him. I don't mean, you know, a letter in the post, but generally, you know, I must, I can't speak for other humans, but uh, I've generally, generally had a, you know, most of the time get to know when I need to go to the toilet and kind of, kind of not have to do it straight away course is it's not always the case but with him it seems to be always be the case that he has to go right now that might be due to laziness he might leave it to the last minute so I'm thinking he doesn't get any notice and suddenly he has to go and he has to go now and he just has to do it but it might he might have like an hour's notice he might be sitting, laying down in his bag, thinking, I need to do a wee wee, but I've got ages, I've got a whole hour. I'm now gonna dream about eating something and biting daddy's toes. And you know, maybe just like, you know like how we can be perhaps with, well, I know I can be with alarm clocks the alarm goes off. Oh, five minutes. Oh, five minutes more. And that five minutes is the most beautiful feeling. Just saying five minutes more. And then, because I think if you can capture So I had a friend who went to, he had an operation and it was in order for him to have his body give him notice about something. And it was just a very tiny nerve in his body. And it was the case of trying to stimulate that tiny nerve that would, you know, change his life. But, it, and, I'm not sure if it worked or not, I didn't ask, but he, and there was a point that I was saying this. Yeah, if you could get that feeling of you know, when you're so tired and you're in the morning, you're waking up and you say, oh, five minutes and put the alarm, you know, turn the alarm off or, you know, put it on sleep so it rings in another five minutes. Because that feeling just then, you can just drift back into sleep so easily, like instantly, to be the most relaxed and so To get into that mode, to have that little bit of stimulation, whatever part of your brain that is in, that little bit of stimulation, 
to be able to get into that mode where you, when you go to bed, you can kind of just press that button in your mind, or in your brain, and that feeling of just five minutes. But it isn't five minutes because there's no alarm clock and you've got all night or all day, you know, depending on when you sleep and just drifting off and just like, oh. Just that comfort of it. I like that idea. The idea of being able to tap into feelings that were useful or that are useful and kind of putting them somewhere else it's a bit like editing you think you watch uh, if you listen to let's say an audio that I do I don't do this but if I wanted to I could talk for two hours and I could spend half an hour of that swearing and saying horrible you know really horrible stuff and then edited it editing it out I could be sneezing and all kinds of stuff edit it down to an hour and it's just me talking and you never it's like the the screen isn't it until I kind of showed you the messy room you weren't aware of that but it looks, all you can see is up to kind of where my hands are. You can see a little bit of the background. But you can't see the door over there. You can't see, you can't see what my hand's doing now. Oh, you couldn't see what my hand was doing now. That was, I'm having a cup of coffee. And, um, so sometimes it feels like perhaps we could do that when it comes to things like sleep we could edit it and take the bits out that are useful and move them to a different place so maybe there's a time when it's not useful so like for example let's say your you're meeting your partner's parents for the first time and they're talking about when they met and or they're talking about your partner's childhood and maybe they're going through the photo albums and you're practically falling asleep and it's like you're struggling to keep your eyes open through boredom bit like when you listen to me and but if you could move that because obviously falling asleep especially if you took a sleeping bag with you I mean that would be rude but you know you can't just lay down and, and go to sleep when you're being shown photographs of of your you know future husband or wife possibly you know and uh, that'll ruin the date, I tell you. Laying down on the floor and sleeping, it's, it's a, just don't do it, if you can help it. Besides, it, it's health and safety, it trips the weight, waiters up and you know, it's just not good. So if you could cut that little bit out, snip it out, but then move it somewhere to maybe where you used to perhaps be wide awake when you didn't want to be. Swap them over, cut that bit out of the wide awake bit and move that to the bit where you're being shown uh, photographs of like, holiday snaps or whatever. You know? So you can move that into there, slice it in there so that you're wide awake listening and it looks like you're interested in what you're being shown the pictures and then that that complete 
boredom, tedious, wanting to lay down and just close your eyes and go to sleep, you could just slip that into the part where you were wide awake and wanting to sleep. So, just so where you were wide awake and wanting to sleep, and you wanted to sleep but were far, you know, really tired, just swap them over. Slip them in. Click it so they stay. And you've got the best of both worlds. So I'm quite pleased with that. Not the rest of it, but that one little bit at the end. I think it was worth your admission fee just for that. That's why editing is really good because I could have just done a a one minute recording and given you that little bit of gold. I missed out all the other stuff. Apart from maybe uh, Andre's Teddy used to be blue. I quite like that as well. Um, I'll leave you with one thing. Because I was looking at I was watching the, there's a documentary about how we progressed, you know, through, uh, you know, cavemen days and how we like became kind of who we are, you know, walking on four legs to walking on two or being fish or I don't know whatever I, I didn't give it that much attention to be fair because I had a box of Maltesers and I was eating them and it just reminded me because we've got a tailbone and I remember when I was younger I actually thought it wasn't that long before I had tiny little tail I did I actually thought I had a tiny little tail then I realized I was walking backwards so I'm gonna go and thank you for watching and thank you for listening and I shall speak to you another time Thank you for all two of you. I would sing you a song, but it's probably not appropriate. Or just generally, ever. Look at my haircut, look. But you wouldn't know because I haven't made a video for ages. So you wouldn't know what my hair was like before. It's big, it was, it was big really curly anyway bye bye take care and remember that you do deserve to be happy